Hey there folks, this is GreenyXI, welcoming you right back to Let's Play Yumaniko. In the last episode, well, <laughs> this episode 141, in the last episode, we saw Angie and Battler get together and they were going to cross back to the City of Books or the library and we're going to see what happens there in terms of them trying to stop the, the single truth getting out to the public. Um, so there is that, but for today it looks like we're going back to the Golden Land and the Defenders of the Gate. Shannon and Cannon stood guard in front of the door to the Golden Land. They glared quietly and fearlessly at the eerie fleet of ships across the horizon. Shannon slowly lifted her hands. Cannon raised his right hand and a red blade appeared there. Stop right there. I forbid you to come any closer. If you do, I'll kill you. They could see a single dinghy leaving the fleet and approaching them. They couldn't tell if it was a messenger or the first wave. Shannon and Cannon watched it cautiously. <laughs> what the hell's going on? <laughs> At the head of the dinghy, rowed by goats, stood Erica. Where the heck did she get that thing from? Maybe she's trying to act the part of the fleet's leader. Erica was glaring at them and smiling aggressively with what appeared to be a pirate hat on her head. I've come to deliver our terms. There will be room for negotiation. Please open the gate. Shannon and Cannon looked at each other. Erica was the one offering the steal. It wasn't likely to be anything agreeable. However, if they turned her away, the attack would probably begin at once. Since they were in a firmly inferior position, they wanted to buy time by any means they could. At Shannon's nod, Cannon erased his sword. The Golden Land was filled with a hard downpour accompanied by occasional thunder. Erica, who realised that this weather spoke for their emotions, smiled even more boldly. boldly. At the centre of the Golden Land was the arbour surrounded by the Golden Rose Garden. A large number of humans and illusions were there, arguing about something. Even without asking, it was easy to guess the nature of the debate by their anguished expressions. After all, in this life or death situation, they didn't have many options they could take. In the direction Erica was being led, Beto stood waiting, accompanied by the Chester sister corpse. When Erica, accompanied by her goat guards, saw Beto, she gave a bow that only appeared graceful. Beto followed suit and gave a graceful bow of the sort that was rarely seen from her. I am Beatrice, master of the Golden Land and the Golden and Endless Witch. Announce yourself. As though implying that she was more than happy to go through with this farce, Beto introduced herself boldly and requested that Erica do the same. We have been dispatched from the great witch of theatre going, drama and spectating's noble city of carefully selected books. I am the Witch of Truth, the commander of the library fleet, which is committed to bestowing honour and protection to books. My name is Frudo Erica. It's a pleasure to make your acquaintance. Shall we get down to business? You ought to celebrate. We of the library fleet, dedicated to offering honour and protection to books, have come to bring good news to you all. First. I would like to announce that, after careful selection, the City of Books has acknowledged and accepted the game board created by the Endless Witch Beatrice as a great and honourable book. Huh. That's indeed a great honour. That game board is a profoundly entertaining and original masterpiece, worthy of close study. It deserves to be released for all our subjects to read. And so, the City of Books has ordered us to grant eternal honour and protection to this game board. This is all quite long and boring. Get to the point. We demand that you hand the entirety of this game board over to the Honourable City of Books. Doing so will give this board and its pieces the greatest honour and protection imaginable. And if we refuse, you will be prosecuted for the crime of monopolising a great cultural artefact that ought to be shared among all of our subjects. We are here to notify you of the impending assault, one which will be waged by us to protect the benefits that are the rightful property of all subjects, not yours alone. You're not concerned that the shared property of all subjects might be destroyed in this assault of yours? According to the Great Library Protective Regulations, when a criminal guilty of monopolisation of a cultural artefact raises that objection, as you have now done, 
The executive fleet may prioritize arrest over its protective duties, as long as they obtain permission from the Great Court. Of course, we have already obtained the Great Court's written authorization. I imagine the word arrest is closely followed by dead or alive, am I right? My, my. I'm impressed that you can read those tiny letters. Now, enough fooling around. <laughs> Let's hear your answer. What do we have to gain by accepting your conditions? Both of us will be saved a troublesome task. Furthermore, your brave and noble acts will be recorded as a glorious final chapter in the City of Books. You do understand, right? You have no chance of winning. This isn't even a fight. It's just you, sitting there at the bottom of a well, while people throw stones at you. So you claim that I have the power to choose nothing except how the library witches will record my final moments? Hm. The rest depends on you. If you treasure this game board, you ought to surrender. The pieces will be treasured by our many loyal subjects for all time, and will be able to continue their roles on into eternity. Hm. In other words, the tragedies I created at will shall repeat forevermore. <laughs> Sorry, I just woke up. <laughs> How is that any different from what you've been doing so far? It isn't. Is there anything else? If not, allow me to give you my answer. Go ahead. Erica tensed slightly. After all, this was the great Lady Beatrice she was dealing with. She might shout, here's my answer, dramatically and do something crazy. This here cornered rat is the most likely to bite a cat. Furthermore, Erica had intel telling her that the great Lady Dam Lambda Delta, Witch of the Senate, had been spending her time inside the Golden Land, though only as a theatre goer. Erica needed to carry out this noble task that her master had assigned her, and she had to carry it out perfectly. If she was honest, she wanted to make Beto raise a white flag, even by trickery if necessary. So even though this was a farce, she held back from giving any unneeded provocation. She gulped and tried to size Beto up. And then, with a pathetic expression on her face, Beto let out a sigh. I'll be honest. The truth is, I'm tired. What do you mean by that? My game had already achieved its purpose when my fight with Battler ended. And yet, for various reasons, the game has repeated several times since then. To be perfectly honest, I'm tired of it. To be honest, that isn't the answer I was expecting at all. So you want to surrender? Really? Simply put, I don't care either way. It doesn't matter whether I surrender or whether we're vanquished by you. I simply wish to have the curtain closed on this game board and tail, regardless of who does the deed. Of course, that was a lie. She knew she couldn't win, even if she fought. For now, the best option was to play for time. They would fix Erica's attention to this spot, and during that time, Battler and the others would steal the key from Burncastle while she was completely off her guard. Once they had the key, they would return to the Golden Land, use that key to let Auntie open the door to the future and see her off. That was their goal line. Everything that happened after that would be inside the cat box. And she would live on into the future with hope. No one would know whether Beto and the others were alive or dead. That was enough. The only strategy Beto and the others could use to achieve this was to buy time. If you do surrender, it may be a bit of an anticlimax, but it will save me a lot of trouble. But well, it's not quite so simple. You see, and this is just between you and me. As you may know, the Great, la great Lady Lambda Delta is staying here. She is um, pushing us to show her a dramatic climax. That's a pretty cruel whim to force on someone. How are a few wimpy people in what's basically an already solved puzzle supposed to fight against our fleet with its hundreds of thousands of troops? Very true, very true. The gap in strength is overwhelming. We told her that it wouldn't even be a fight, but... Well, Lady Lambda Delta didn't listen, and just said she would bring some of her friends to support us, so we should fight with everything we had. Lady Lambda Delta's friends? Unlike Burncastle, who kept to herself, Lady Lambda Delta had many friends. Her friends and patrons were either territory lords of great influence who came from all over the place, or else monsters that had become legends in their own lifetimes. In all seriousness, her so-called fan club had enough size and influence that it could have suddenly declared itself a separate country in the Sea of Fragments, without anyone being overly surprised. This is quite a problem for us, with Lady Lambda, De Lambda Delta already for action. Without any regard for us, she keeps calling up friends and acquaintances on the phone from all over the place, telling them to come over. Of course, this was all a lie. 
the Landed Elder had turned into a small candy comet and was now shooting towards the city of Bucks, with Battler and Angie in tow. So to make sure that the Lambda Deltas and Battler's absences were not noticed, everyone was crowded around the arbor, pretending to argue furiously with each other. Battler Sama, give us your decision. We, the Seven Sisters of Purgatory, are prepared for death at any time. I firmly oppose taking our last stand that would lead to our deaths. What could possibly be gained by dying? How can you be such a coward? It's inconceivable that we should live on in shame as prisoners. There are times when the mere fact of being alive gives one opportunities. Yes, indeed. A short temper makes a bad leader. Battler, if you call yourself a man, now's the time to act like one. The great Lady Lambda Delta, Sama, is even willing to help out, right? I agree. These are the times when a man has to make a tough decision. In many cases, the timing of a decision is more valuable than the decision itself. If we surrender, they might not be violent. You can't be serious. Weren't you supposed to be a male lion? Where are your fangs now? If death awaits us regardless, I would rather die as a wolf than a pig. You stupid. You saying you want to die like a dog? It all depends on the strength of the support Lambda Delta San can provide. Lambda Delta San, are your friends really strong enough to win against them? It's a bet. We'll either surrender and die, or we'll lose a bet and die. Interesting. In that case, our chances of survival must be higher if we take that bet. An honourable surrender will surely cause the Great Court to show mercy. They're backed by the Senate, aren't they? Sure, they'll hem and haw, but we'll all see the guillotine in the end. Anyway, let's all calm down. Cool your heads. I'm opposed to letting our emotions control us. Why don't you calm down first? We have another possible strategy. Mutually assured destruction. We might not be able to win, but if we can convince them that we plan on taking enough of them with us, that might force our opponents to show restraint. So basically, if they're determined to attack, we let them know we aren't going down without doing some damage first. Hmm. All of Lambda Delta's friends are incredible. She knows lots and lots of witches, beasts, demons and gods, all of which have really, really huge legends and histories. Even if those ships outnumbered the stars in the sky, Lambda Delta's friends would wipe them out with a single blast. <laughs> Will this really work? She hasn't seen through our act yet, has she? It's working. You must speak more forcefully as well. Do not worry about politeness. Enough, you get the swine. <laughs> Do you lack the backbone to finish with a bang? Hold on. Don't forget that some of us are opposed to fighting. I think we should surrender. What? Go there, you loser-loving fool. <laughs> Ouch, master. It's just an act. <laughs> uh, looks like the debate has gotten quite heated. So will we surrender? Or will we fight back? Which will it be? Nobody knows. Personally speaking, I would like to surrender. If my role will end either way, I would prefer that my game board be preserved the way I made it. I could not bear to have Lady Lambda Delta continue to use it however she pleases. We don't want that either. I came here to fight you, but I'm no match for Lady Lambda Delta's friends. Secretly, Erica was getting worried by these complicated de developments and she was relieved that she hadn't pushed too hard earlier on. She wanted to flatter Beto and end this with a bloodless takeover. Even the great Lady Lambda Delta probably wouldn't seriously think of picking a fight with the Senate. Her motive was probably something much more trivial, a simple desire to watch the game board's final fireworks from a front row seat. However, if she really did have some fireworks of her own prepared, it was at least possible that this act turned into a ruckus that Erica would have no chance of quelling. Beto saw all of this going on in Erica's mind, so she continued to act with an even more pathetic expression on her face. Even among witches, her acting ability was top notch. <laughs> might you be willing to lend us some of your strength so that my game board's beauty will be preserved? Truly, it was a great error to invite that busybody as a guest. <sighs> I understand. I'd like to end this quietly too if I can. So how can we work together? For some time now, we've been arguing over whether we should surrender or resist. I intend to return to them and propose that we surrender and ask Lady Lambda Delta not to do anything that might destroy the game board. That would please me very much. So what should I do? I would like you to guarantee that we have the necessary time to debate the matter. After all, your ships are surrounding and pressuring us at the moment. 
Everyone's so tense at the thought that we may be attacked at any time that they've fallen apart. So if you guarantee that we will have enough time to discuss this amongst ourselves, everyone will surely be able to keep their composure during that time. Furthermore, I will have enough time to convince Lady Lambda Delta. Very well. About how long do you need? Would you be gracious and avoid giving us a specific time limit? If a time limit is imposed, everyone will just fall apart again as the limit nears, possibly leading to a more radical decision. You have a point there. The most important thing about a fuse is whether it's lit or not. The length of the fuse is a trivial matter. In that case, will you give us the time we need? Understood. I guarantee that you'll have time to discuss it. However, that time won't be unlimited. I'll wait here and listen in on your discussion. Well, as far as that goes, it's true that your mere presence here has everyone on edge. I've already made my conscious, uh, concessions. Isn't it your turn now? They were some distance away from the arbor, but it was just close enough to give a general idea of what was going on. It was far enough that they just might be able to hide the fact that Battler and La uh, Lambda Delta were missing. Just far enough for them to convincingly act like this was a white-hot argument in gridlock. If it were possible, they would rather have kept Erica at an even greater distance. They had planned to set up a seat of honour for their guest at one of the far corners of the garden maze. Is this some sort of problem? Okay, okay. Don't make such a scary face. In that case, please wait here. This is a um, confidential conference. So you must uh, come no closer than this line. Peter drew a line in the ground with her foot. Help them see me in a good light. If it's clear that I have obtained a generous agreement from you, that will be a powerful weapon in my hands in the debate. Could I get a chair? Yes, yes, of course. Just a sister, uh, just the troops. Bring Lady Erica a chair and umbrella at once. And a hand towel too. I'll wipe it nice and clean for you. How kind of her. <laughs> My lady, have there been any developments in our negotiations? If anything certain, it's that I'll be winning this year's prize for best actress. That's our Beatrice Sammer. All we can do is argue fiercely, squabble amongst ourselves, and make it look like things will turn for the worse if negotiations break down. Indeed. This is yet another fight to support Battler's group. Get yourselves ready, everyone. Let's argue and insult with all we have. Got it? Mmm, yes, master. The sight of Goda, his cheek red and swollen from being pinched, made everyone snort. But they quickly covered their mouths and put fingers to their lips. Then everyone nodded at each other, and the fake argument resumed. Erica was sitting in the chair that the Chester sisters had brought her, filling the goat in on the details of their discussions. The goats would probably return and tell the rest of the fleet. The fleet would tell Burncastle, and Burncastle might think of some plan to deal with the situation, or give new orders. The conversation with the goat ended, and it spun around. It would return to the dinghy and report on this to the fleet. It slipped out from a rose bush and passed through the garden maze, heading towards the door that led outside. Is it really okay to let that goat reach the boats? If it goes back, Erica's report will reach Burncastle's ears. The Chester sisters spoke through a secret channel that only they could use. Two seconds, yeah? Won't even be a sound, yeah? It's just about to leave Erica's sphere of awareness. Estimated 10 seconds before it reaches the goat boatman's sphere, so assassination can be carried out successfully. Lady Beatrice, your permission to assassinate, if you please? We can do it. Erica will sense nothing. You do not have permission. Did you think an envoy would leave their ship without setting a time limit? The fleet probably has orders to attack if it isn't contacted within a certain period of time. Let that goat go. Understood. The goat passed through the door. Then after receiving a silent bow from Shannon and the cannon, it got on the dinghy and returned to the fleet. The fleet would probably follow Erica's orders and stand by until an attack order was given. That gave the residents of the Golden Land a chance to assassinate Erica. But of course, that wasn't going to be possible, practically speaking. She was Burncastle's greatest underling, and a witch who controlled truth. Tricking her was all they could hope for. Anything else would be overconfident. Why don't you all have a seat too? You need have no worries about us. Without any hint that she had just been talking about assassinations, Zero Zero stood upright with her hands clasped behind her back. Surrender or resist until the end. 
the false argument resumed. Just how far and how long would they be able to trick Erica? Yes, the final fight for the Golden Land had already begun. Battler, you can count on us to handle things here. It's time for you and Angie to take this final game back. Are we going to go to them now? Yes. This was one freakishly huge library. I've heard that each one of these books has a tale like ours inside it. After all, this is a world of gods. You can tell at a glance that it's no place for scum like you to be in, right? After passing through the barrier, the three of them had finally made it inside the city of books. For some time, they were overcome by the countless uh, otherworldly sights before them, but they quickly remembered their original objective. You listening? First off, don't get the wrong idea. You two came here to fight Burn. But that doesn't mean walking up to her and attacking her directly, okay? We know. In the first place, you were only able to fight the Great Beatrice on an even footing because the game board protected you with rules that made it that way. If you leave the game board, you're more like something that'll leave a small stain on her palm when she swats you. Don't forget that, got it? Makes sense. This isn't the game board we're familiar with. We didn't come here to fight. We came here to take something back with us. Exactly. You're here to prevent the Book of the Single Truth from being exposed to the public. That's your only goal, your only fight. You better not be confused about that. Battle and Angie nodded to show their understanding. The Book of the Single Truth itself is being displayed openly in the middle of the party, so stealing that'll be impossible. However, bringing in the key is going to be a big part of the ceremony which means the key must be stored in a different place. But there's no guarantee that it'll be undefended. After that, it's all up to your luck. Hope it's good, for your sakes. Hide. Landy Delta pulled her head back from around the corner of her bookshelf. The others hurriedly followed suit. In the distance, they saw emerald green lights floating about and leaving trails. Those are Burns' cat familiars. She's got them patrolling all over the place today. Did you guess that we could come? We would come. No. Don't forget how huge this place is. Those are staff cats, out looking for idiot guests who've gotten lost so they can be taken to the lost children area. <laughs> and that's not where we want to go at the moment. If it looks like one's about to find us, should we take them out? I'd advise against it. Maybe if this was some other territory or game board. But this is Burns' home base. That single cat should make you as scared as being surrounded by a crowd of vicious beasts. Plus, they're cats. They've got good senses, and they'll call for their friends. If they spot you, you better be prepared for what happens next. I'm not going to save you. Just getting you here has been troublesome enough. If I surrender, I might get off the hook with being stripped naked and thrown into the worst sort of crappy fragment for just a century. How wonderful. I think I can sympathise with Burns' feelings a bit now. Lambda Delta wasn't laughing. Most likely, even this punishment she spoke of was pretty optimistic. Even though she keeps saying that she won't help anymore, she's already risking everything. Why? Isn't it obvious? Lambda Delta brushed her hair back and grinned. It's because you're going to show me the perfect happy ending. Lambda Delta hugged their heads at the same time, making their foreheads bonk together. You better show me, for certain. Yeah. We'll certainly show you a happy ending. We'll certainly take this cat box back. Let's go. This way, and swim quietly. I forgot they were swimming. <laughs> the three of them swam out into the darkness of the deep ocean trench that was the city of books. In that massive, vast trench of bookshelves, they vanished into the darkness almost immediately. The library defied the common sense of the human world. The city of books. The word city was no exaggeration, and it was filled with the green glowing eyes of Burncastle's countless cat familiars. Trying to count them would be almost as crazy as counting all the fish in the ocean. They formed schools that swam all over the place, on the lookout for any fools who might miraculously have managed to slip in and disturb their master's party. If Battler's group was found, the cats would report it instantly. They would probably form a pack, open their large mouths and swallow them in a single gulp. 
there would be no fight. In this place, Battler's party would be swallowed like tiny fishes if they were discovered. Fishes? <laughs> the warships surrounding the Golden Land were well more than a hundred strong. Each of them had dozens of cannons pointing at the door to the Golden Land. The goats that packed the decks of the ships numbered in the tens of thousands. Each one of them carried enough anti-magic toxin in their fangs to completely deny one of the game board pieces. This time, they would chew apart and eat away everything. The crowd of goats unleashed their rotten breath and dangling do uh, drool. At that time, Erica, who wanted to avoid trouble and hoped Beto would be able to convince Lambda Delta to surrender peacefully, was sitting alone, calmly enjoying the tea Ronave had poured for her. Of course, even Erica wasn't planning to give them unlimited time. In her mind, she'd already decided to allow them three yawns before stepping in. This actually isn't so bad. Getting to watch Beto try and convince everyone as they call her a coward and a loser. Indeed, it's impressive that our short-tempered mistress has managed to become such an adult. <laughs> so funny. Oh, pardon me. You ready for another cup? Please feel free to enjoy our collection of great teas from across the globe at your leisure. Lambda's leading Beto's side into an all-out resistance. And she's gathering her friends. Is this a joke? The messenger cat shook its head and continued to dispassionately meow its report. Even Lambda isn't that stupid. She should know what it means to have our as her enemy. Even as she said this, Bencastle was chewing away at her thumbnail. Despite how she looks, that kid has a lot of strange friends. And they're all idly curious, crazy monsters. Even so, to take up arms against the Senate. It is possible. She could think of many monsters among Lambda Delta's friends who would love to see her lose inside, gain support and make a comeback victory. Before she realised it, the finger burn castle was biked and was covered with sweat. She could do it. She really is a moron sometimes, after all. Get me a phone, quickly. The cat leapt away, then flew back with a phone and receiver. I'm gonna call up her friends. I have to warn them not to get involved in this stupid game. Um, phone numbers, phone numbers. I don't have any phone numbers saved in here. Oh right, I have no friends. <laughs> um, how are you supposed to greet people over the phone? Does hello work? Meow. No, meow doesn't work. Well, it could. I'm sure some people would love it. <laughs> the golden key was being kept in a room inside the city of books. However, perhaps room wasn't a fitting word to use. It was large enough that you could probably fit two domed baseball stadiums in it, if you tried. Even so, in this city, these were called rooms. Floating in the centre of this vast room were several sacred magic circles. Wrapped around by these magic circles was Angie's gold key. Surrounding these were countless emerald green stars, which looked like a slowly revolving planetarium. The eyes that numbered the same as the stars were all glaring in the same direction, Come on, don't look at me like that. I'm on your side, did you forget? One of the cats cat paddled towards Eva, meowing that no one was allowed to enter this room. Lady Burncastle has ordered me to guard that key, so why don't you leave this to me and get lost? After looking at each other with suspicious eyes, the cats glared at Eva again, as though saying that they hadn't heard any such order. By the way, cats have pretty soft bodies, don't they? Hmm? Makes it much easier to chew. Eva lifted up her golden staff, and the floor and ceiling of the vast room were covered with red lines. The reaction from the cats was lightning fast. They realised instantly that this was hostile behaviour. The entire emerald green constellation writhed and became a single massive deep sea fish, which charged at Eva with its cavernous mouth open wide. However, at the same time, the red lines on the floor and ceiling, the massive spider web, pinched itself together and crushed the fish. Twisted it, spun it round and round, and compressed it into the size of a small ball. I love how everything related to these cats is, is green. It's got a nice sort of colour connection. <laughs> then that ball shaped thing burst open, leaving nothing left. It all happened in an instant. If only you just give up and die.
the witch hunters were holding a, conven a convention in the event hall. After all, when Shromaya Eva's diary was opened, the endless cat box would be lost, along with the countless Im imagined stories that had entertained them for so long. So this final convention was a time for them to air their best theories one last time. While the opening of the cat box did give them a slightly lonely feeling, they couldn't contain their excitement as intellectual rapists. Not when they knew that the Rock and Gema mystery was finally going to be solved once and for all. If that box were opened, a single girl would be hurt. However, their jaws and fangs couldn't care less. The witch hunting goat nobles kept licking their lips, wanting to chew apart the guts of Beatrice's cat box as soon as they could. Seated upon a solemn throne so tall it looked like a pillar, Featherin listened in on the nonsense being spewed from the mouths of the goat nobles. A black cat wearing a cape silently appeared and whispered something into Featherin's ear. Oh, that's fine. Everything's going according to my plot. You need not inform my Miko. The cat bowed humbly and vanished. Featherin raised her wine glass high and laughed as she looked through it. Bless me. <laughs> through it to the light of the chandelier, which was as beautiful and majestic as the moon. It should be enough to thank you for your excellent reading, child of man. Well now, just who is weaving this tale? Am I for you? Or are you for me? I love how I switch in sort of scenarios, environments, so regularly. Back to Lambda. What do you think? A trap? As Battler's group moved forward, darting from bookshelf to bookshelf and avoiding the eyes of the cats, they found something strange. Written with a faintly glowing red substance was a letter and an arrow. K. That's what it looked like to them. Do you think K means key? Those marks only appeared when we got close. This is a message aimed at us. Is there anyone here besides us who'd be willing to help? I didn't think we had any allies. Angie traced the red arrow with her finger. It was written with very faint, thin strings that had been tied together. This red stuff which stuck to your finger and tore away like cotton candy had to be... There's someone on our side. Someone who's always been on my side. How can you be so sure? Yeah, I get it too now. Lambda? We can trust the person who wrote this. She'll probably be able to guide us to the key safely. Sure. Then let's go. We don't have time to be standing around. Thank you, Mom. Good old Eva. In the arbor, the argument over whether they should surrender or fight continued without signs of stopping. Every now and then, a small fight would break out, which fortunately ended up delaying Erica's third yawn. However, they didn't know how long they would have to continue this fake fight. Keeping this high level of tension going was physically stressful. The instant they tired out and the tension faded, Erica would probably demand a verdict. They had to constantly appear to be trapped and agitated. It was a battle of weariness and tension. This was their fight. Erica waited patiently. Now that she had tired of tea, she was watching Ronave perform some magic tricks, and seemed to be enjoying herself considerably. Even Ronave, who was usually aloof from the world, was fighting. If Erica got bored and had a tantrum, an all-out attack would probably begin at once. He was also putting his life on the line in the fight to buy time for Battler's group. As the fiercest leader in the argument, Beta wore out the quickest. She breathed heavily and her face was so pale it seemed she might faint at any moment. Beto, hang in there. Your body won't hold out much longer at this rate. Pretend to suddenly burst into tears and rest for a while. We'll pick up the slack. I'm still fine. I can do this. Just one more push. Let's go. So who's up next? Who wants to be beaten down first? In that case, I, Goda, am prepared. We must fight. It would be outrageous to accept defeat without fighting. As I've said from the beginning, Fighting with all we have is the only option. Hold on a second. Erica suddenly rose from her chair. Bonnevay tried to coax her back into her seat, but Erica's attention was completely focused on those arguing under the arbor. I am the detective. My memory of what I hear is as good as a recording. We are aware of that, of course. You are quite an excellent detective, after all. I'm not interested in you. Goda-san, I have one question for you. 
Yes, ma'am. Have I done something to cause offence? Hold on. Don't forget that some of us are opposed to fighting. I think we should surrender. Those were the first words I heard from you when I arrived here. However, you just said this. We must fight. It would be outrageous to accept defeat without fighting. As I've said from the beginning, fighting with all we have is the only option. That's what you said. Oh, uh, did I say that? It's hardly strange for an opinion to change in the course of a discussion. Indeed. All of us have been feeling doubts about our position lately, so an occasional change of opinion wouldn't be... No. From beginning to end, no one has changed their opinion in this argument. Just now, Godasan alone flipped this position 180 degrees. Furthermore, I can't imagine that any of the statements made by the rest of you were sufficient to make Godasan switch his position. An uncomfortable, moist, moist wind blew by. Everyone was silent, frozen as though time had stopped. In that silence, Erica continued with a blank expression. This can lead us to two conclusions. First, it may be that Godasan has no opinion, and is just a loser who will say anything that goes with the flow. Second, it may be that none of you has an opinion, and that this entire argument exists only for its own sake. Aren't you overthinking this a bit? Here we are, in a desperate debate that will decide our fate. I hardly think it's strange that some people would act abnormally under such pressure. The only reason for prolonging a meaningless argument is to buy time. Do you have anything to gain by uh, buying time? Is it because Lady Lambda Delta's reinforcements will come? That can't be true either. After all, for some time now, I've heard all of you speak to Leader, uh, Lady Lambda Delta and Battler occasionally, but not once have I heard them reply. Taking all of this into account, we're left with only one conclusion. The Lady Lambda Delta and Battler are not here now. That these people have won Lady Lambda Delta's assistance, with Lady Lambda Delta and Battler probably planning to sneak into the City of Books. Uh oh. In which case, their goal is probably to steal back the Golden Key and Angie. And your plan was to act as bait and buy time until their mission was complete. But because of Godasan's single, poorly chosen line, this level of reasoning is possible for Frodo Erica. What do you think? Everyone? With a blank yet ruthless expression, Erica spoke these words and returned to her seat. Everyone else was frozen, unable to move. No one spoke. However, time was moving. As evidence, a bead of sweat dripped down someone's cheek, fell, and hit the table with a tiny yet audible splat. I've never heard of sweat being audible. <laughs> then frozen time shattered, and in the same instant, the white chair Erica had been sitting in broke apart. The sticks of the Seven Sisters of Purgatory and the high velocity rounds from the Chester Sister Corpse hit the chair at exactly the same time. And a few more moments after that, the Erica sitting in that chair faded and vanished. After image. She's fast. Kill her. In an instant, Erica had moved to a spot behind the chair. Her expression remained as blank as it had before. However, there was now something in her hand that hadn't been there. As the seven lightning strikes of the seven sisters raced at her once more, she batted all of them away with her scythe. That was one hell of a farce. But the tea was good, thanks for the meal. Well now, it seems that you've all been in agreement since the start. Allow me to ask for your answer once again. Erica lifted her left hand, the one that wasn't holding the scythe. Very well, allow me to answer. This golden land belongs to me, to all of us. If you enter with your shoes on, we'll give you a proper welcome. In other words, to put it elegantly, all cannons prepare to fire. Target the golden land. Wash your face in miso soup. <laughs> Shoot them dead. Shit, so that part is broken apart. Yes, thank you. See you around. Meow. Burncastle set down the receiver and crossed out yet another name on a list of Lambda Delta's notable friends. Something was wrong. Not a single person she called had heard anything from Lambda Delta. They were just plain dumb. They really knew nothing about the strange ruckus Lambda Delta was trying to stir up. Even Burncastle was starting to suspect that something was fishy. Then a black cat leapt in and meowed a frantic report. Lambda and Battler aren't in the Golden Land. She tore the phone receiver from its stand. The number she dialed was short. It was probably an internal line. However, after listening to it ring several times, she slammed the receiver down again, finally managing to break the phone. Gather all the cats who aren't busy. 
This is an emergency. The cat's head guard and the key aren't responding. Lambda gah! <laughs> then Castle overwhelmed with emotion, kicked the table over. Then the room finally grew bright. It was like green sunlight. A green, a bright green light waved about, giving the illusion that the green sun was rising and lighting the room up. It was a sign that Burncastle's army had been given an emergency summons. Come, my kitties. It's time for a witch hunt. That kid always smells like candy, so you'll find her pretty fast. The first cat who finds her will get a human form and a witch's title. What was now an emerald green nebula let out a roar of delight that shook the bookshelf cliff. Something's chasing us. What is that? A green sun? Hide! They know! The three of them frantically hid behind a bookshelf. The room with the key in it was straight ahead. They could see something glinting faintly in the darkness of that room. It was a glint different from anything else they had seen so far in the city. The colour of the glint was gold. They had almost reached the golden key. However, if they went towards it, Burncastle would be right behind them, along with her vast swarm of familiars. In other words, they were trapped in a dead end. They already knew that the emerald green colour came from the eyes of the familiars. However, it was almost beyond comprehension that the undulating green sun could be the same thing, and they could do nothing except stare in wide-eyed shock. The countless cats were passing through the ravine of bookshelves from the very top to the very bottom. As they approached, they painstakingly checked the gaps between each book. However, even this mind-numbingly huge task was accomplished swiftly thanks to the sheer number of familiars. With the speed of a gust of wind, they carefully checked every nook and cranny. There was no way to hide from this green sun. That would have been as foolish as trying to hide from water on a sinking ship. Will we be able to hide until they pass us? No. At this rate, we'll be found no matter where we go. Battler was just about to leap out from the shadows, but Lander Delta grabbed him by the collar an instant before. You thinking of fighting? No, but we'll be found if we just stay here. So we have to move forward. We need to reach the key as soon as possible. You really think there won't be cats guarding the key? We'll just be pinched between them. I believe in Aunt Eva. She's the one who guided us this far. I'm sure she took care of the car uh, guard cats too. I agree. If we're going to be found anyway, let's try and get there as fast as possible and grab the key. If we can just do that, no one will be able to open the book. So you'll rush in there and grab the key? And then what? That place is a dead end, right? You realise there'll be nowhere to run, don't you? We know that, but... The key will be our trump card. It's vitally important to Burncastle too. If worst comes to worst, we might be able to use the key as a bargaining chip. Bargain with Burn? You're insane. But if we hide here, we'll definitely be found. In that case, I'll take a bet on that billion to one chance. We'll get the key and have that be our trump card. So you're praying for a miracle to win against the Witch of Miracles? Picking a winner out of astronomically bad odds. That's your show my family's magic. I've got good eyesight, so let me enlighten you. Can you see all those magic circles around the golden key? That's a simple barrier, but a pretty strong one. It'll break if you just touch it. But it's a sort of annoying seal that'll take exactly one hour to fade, whether a great witch or a lowly human does it. It's still over an hour before the ceremony begins. In other words, we won't even be able to touch the key unless we can buy time for a whole hour. When Aunt Eva took out the guard cats, she must have broken the magic circle too. Probably won't take an hour. As far as I can see, the magic circle is still intact. So I'd say it, but even if Eva did touch it, it was less than an hour ago. Well, what's an hour? At least we know we can grab it if we manage to stick around that long. Yeah. Sure, let's play tag for an hour. I'm used to getting chased around by thugs. You two really are out of your minds. You really plan to play tag against Burn and all her cats? If there's even a 1% chance, you can be certain that we'll grab it. The difference in enthusiasm between the siblings, who had everything to lose, and Lambda Delta was immense. However, Lambda Delta was no coward. She was a great witch of the Senate. If she surrendered, she wouldn't be able to escape severe punishment, but she would be forgiven after a few hundred years. Why would she, after being thrown into a stormy sea while clutching a boy that could save only her, decide to throw that boy away? 
No living person could be as determined as those siblings who were already fighting for their lives. No one could blame Lambda. You two really are stupid, you know that? Ah, well. Why don't I tell you about a plan that's got a bit more than a 1% chance of working? How'd that sound? The two siblings looked at each other. However, they both thought that any plan would be worth listening to, even if it would only raise their chances by... a tiny amount. <laughs> a sacrifice. Burn as a cat. She'll chase flea, uh, fleeing prey, but she'll also kill prey that doesn't flee, and only after toying with it first. Cats are terrible people. Still, if that's true, it'll be worth betting on. Let's have one a sacrifice. We'll decide with rock, paper, scissors. Whoever loses has to go taunt Burn, then get laughed at and killed, all to buy as, as much time as possible. Does that work for you? No need for rock, paper, scissors. I'll do it. You two go on to the key room. No way, Oni Chan. I'll do it. This is all my responsibility. I was the one who listened to Burn Castle and trusted her. So I've got a thing or two to say to her. Both Battler and Angie decided to be the sacrifice and wouldn't listen to the other. See? You need rock, paper, scissors to decide, right? If we don't act quickly, we won't even have a chance to use the plan. They'll be here any moment. Okay. Either Angie or I will be the sacrifice. Lambda Delta, you'll take whoever's left, steal the key, and take them back to the Golden Land. I won't let you do it. Only Chan. Quit joking around. You've got to let me act like a big brother at least once in a while. There's no time. Rock, paper, scissors, single round. I'm super paper, so of course we'll start with that. Got it, you two? Fine. No regrets, okay? Three, two, one, paper! It really was a stupid kid's game of rock, paper, scissors. Since they promised to start with paper, this was a chance to make a surprise attack and use something else. However, both Battler and Angie chose rock. And yet it wasn't a tie. Because in addition to those two rocks, there was one person who chose scissors. After staring stupidly at their fists and, and those scissors, they looked at her. Ah, dang. We were supposed to start with paper, so I figured I'd use scissors and beat you both. I guess paper should have stuck with paper. There'd be no reason for Lambda Delta to join in on the game. This wasn't the time for a joke like that. Battler and Angie, each trying to lose, chose rock. Lambda Delta alone chose scissors. Don't tell me you intentionally. If you die, we can't even get back to the Golden Land. It doesn't count. Well then, you can just use this. Lambda Delta made a clenched fist, a palely glowing fragment appeared there, and she gave it to the pair of them. Battler has seen one of these before. It was a magic fragment, like the one Erica had used before disappearing, which would allow one to cross the sea of fragments. With that, you'll be able to return to the Golden Land. And anyway, I'm the best person for the job. You two probably wouldn't last a handful of seconds against Burn. If it's me, not only will now be no problem, but who knows? I might even win. And I owe her one. I've got to make this my victory, and even the score. Still, away games are such a pain. Lambda Delta pretended to complain as she stood up straight. Anyway, see you in a bit. I guess a show off like me couldn't stick to being a spectator after all. Sorry for stealing your time to shine. It's sad that I won't be able to watch your game until the end. But I've already been shown the script, so I'm not missing anything. Lambda. Then with a broadest smile and a wink. This is your happy ending. I've already figured out what happens next, so there's no need to watch. I'll see the two of you again. In the credit roll of your happy ending, that is. Wait. Lambda Delta snapped her fingers and the two of them turned into... Uh, Compaitu candies? Hmm. She picked them up, took aim at the glint of the golden key and flicked them away. That way, they should be able to reach the key without Burncastle noticing. Damn, what terrible luck. What were the odds of them both playing a rock against my scissors? Yeah, I know. It wasn't nice of me to test you like that. Sorry, you two. And then Lambda Delta's body was lit up by an emerald green light. When she turned around, the cat's eyes and Lambda Delta's met. Lambda Delta grinned and waved. There was a fierce roar and several bright flashes. What in the...
A chain of explosions flashed by one after another, enveloping Burncastle and her pack of familiars in an instant. There were multicoloured fireworks, or rather, multicoloured candy that burst with a flash and scattered everywhere. Countless stick candies, sugar sculptures, cookies and tarts flew in every direction, and each one of those split and exploded into hundreds of candies, each of which exploded again into a cloud of compotu. However, these sweets weren't sweet. The compitu was heavier than lead, harder than steel, sharper than any blade. As the colourful cloud exploded outward, it blasted the entire pack of cats into little bits. The emerald green glints were scattered everywhere and sparkled like the night sky, and among them danced a cloud of pretty candies that looked like they'd go well on a Christmas tree. It was sufficiently outrageous and beautiful and cute to mark the great lady, great witch Lady Lambda Delta's appearance on the scene. Oh, if it isn't Lambda. I was hoping to meet you in the party hall. I love you, Boom. Isn't whispering of our love all the better if we're alone? I'd be happy to hear it after I've plucked off all your limbs. With a jerk of a chin, Boom ordered her familiars to attack. This is my dearly beloved and my only friend in the world. Her arms from the elbow down. Her legs from the knees down. You can chew those up however you please. But not a scratch anywhere else on her. The crowd of cats undulated again, reforming into a single mass, and became the emerald green leviathan that would swallow up any poor victims who snuck into the city of books. It was shaped like an impossibly vast whale. However, would it look like a whale from Lander's perspective? She probably couldn't see anything except an immense mouth about to swallow up everything. Ah, simply wonderful. I'm about to be overwhelmed by Burns' love, aren't I? I do love you, Lambda. Once your limbs are gone, I'll skewer you through your butt and hang you by my bed. Every morning I'll give you a good morning kiss, and every evening I'll kiss you goodnight. Sounds great. Then I'd better wrap you up in my love too. However, Lambda Delta's war cry was swallowed up by the glowing, writhing leviathan in a single bite. Hm. Yes, you're wonderful, Lambda. I love that empty-headed way you just do things without looking ahead or worrying about your own life. Hm? Wind? At the same instant the Lambda Delta was swallowed and Burncastle was sure of her victory, the latter felt a slight breeze playing with her hair. The countless sweets the Lambda Delta had sent flying like fireworks and which drifted about like the decorations at a Christmas party were flowing. No, they were converging on a single point. It was like watching a firework run backwards. Countless sweets rapidly contracted around the vast, closed mouth of the Leviathan. A gigantic reverse explosion concentrated on a point inside it. Or perhaps it was more like countless candies showering the Leviathan from all directions like bullets. Inside that mass of green was a black swirl. That swirl was on a palm. On the palm of Lambda Delta, who wore a defiant smile. It was a mass of supergravity. All the sweets, the cats, the whale, everything else was being sucked into that one point and crunched. I'll hold you tight. Get over here, Burn. You're trying to suck me in? All the candies Lambda Delta had scattered were getting sucked back into the black hole on her palm at unbelievable speeds. The reverse explosion of the oncoming candy whittled away at the Leviathan, crushing it inwards. Lambda! Come on, let me give you a hug. With all her strength, Burncastle held her ground in midair, trying to resist the supergravity. For the first time, all trace of condescension had left her face. Even Lambda Delta's cocky expression was marred by the sweat trailing from her forehead. Because their power was so overwhelming, any victory would have to be instantaneous. If either relaxed in the slightest, they would match each other's strengths and get dragged into a, uh, another dizzyingly long fight that could last for centuries. Neither of them had any desire to go through that again, so neither of them showed the slightest mercy for their most beloved friend. By now, the Leviathan had been completely crushed and compressed inside the black hole. Bear Castle was the only one still holding her ground. However, a windstorm of candy asteroids like the Asteroid Belt repeatedly slammed into Burn Castle, wearing away at the girl's form bit by bit. I've got to get away. Well, really? Hmm. The thing flying into Burn Castle's range of vision was a comet pelting straight for her with a massive 
peasant box at its core and a cloud of candy surrounding it. Lambda! Ah. My body! The candy comet wiped out Burncastle along with her scream. It burst into little bits. Within a blink of an eye, it was sucked back into a hole of supergravity. Once it was all gathered into one place like a gem, it began to spin rapidly. It was flattened by the centrifugal force, turning into something whose shape resembled a galaxy. After swallowing all the cats and their master, it now looked like a wiggling, flickering, emerald green galaxy that floated just above Lambda Delta's palm. The pocket of supergravity kept compressing it further and further, until at the end it became a single, green, shining compitu. Then it fell down onto her outstretched palm. Sorry, Burn. I wanted to play with you always, so I've always taken it easy and pretended to be in a pinch. Lambda Delta held the compitu above her head and peered at it. She won! But the truth is, I'm just impossibly strong. Sorry about that. Then she pressed the compitu to her pink lips, gave it a light kiss and bit down. <laughs> She's eating them all. This doesn't taste like burn. Lambda Delta licked her fingertips, then turned to face the empty air behind her. Oh. I already knew. My beloved Lambda. I love you, Burn. Liar. I knew that you never took me seriously. In that case, let's love each other for real. Both of us seriously. I do love you, Lambda Delta. I'm happy, so happy. I do love you, Burn Castle. I'll turn you into candy and cuddle you with my tongue forever. No matter who wins, our love will never fade. That's wonderful, just wonderful. Okay, let's love each other right now. <laughs> With a crash, crack lines appeared across the sky of the Golden Land. Then finally, the barrier of the Golden Land was breached by the fleet's assault. It was a bizarre scene. More ridiculous than anything anyone had imagined. The sky of the Golden Land shattered like glass, and a fleet of sailboats flew in one after another. They were crowded with goats, pushing each other and spilling off the sides. Come, let's begin. This is the Golden Land's final banquet. A banquet? It wasn't some fancy metaphor, but a simple statement of fact. The overwhelming surge of goat troops came in like a tsunami. The residents of the Golden Land, who stood defiantly, were like a forgotten sandcastle on a beach. A flight between a wave and a sandcastle is not a fight. Or a fight. <laughs> this was a banquet for the oncoming Vikings at a stand-up meal, the voracious merciless goats. There's no way around it. Fire! Good. Come goats, bring destruction to all that has form, stillness to all that moves. Despair to all who live. All those who could use magic fired it off at once. With a shout like a thunderclap, the goat tsunami rushed forward. Everything collided at once, and there was a brilliant and terrible explosion. Sparks and smoke, flying splinters and screams. For just an instant, the fierce magical cannonballs fired by Beto, Virgilia, and the Chester sister corpse seemed to halt the goat tsunami in its tracks. However, their numbers were so great that they didn't even flinch. The goat wave continued to walk over the corpses that had been blasted away, or which had fallen to their knees in weariness. The mound of corpses piled up, and still more goats were shot down as they tried to cross it. So that in a few seconds, it really was tall enough to be a tsunami. Pitiful. This golden land you've built is nothing more than a sandcastle some kid left on a beach. Be swallowed up and disappear. Perhaps you should liken it to ripples beating meaninglessly against the wharf. A sandcastle getting swallowed by a wave? Just you try swallowing my castle. Beto lifted her hands, telling the pair of battle towers that had been hidden deep in the ground that, it, that the day of glory had come again. The goat tsunami looked up at it in shock. After all, this time the tsunami that towered over everything wasn't them. 
fire. A thunderstorm of rapid fire ballista rounds leapt from the battle tower gun ports. The goats let out a confused scream at the furious tempest that was bearing down on them. However, they saw something else too. Smothered meat. In the sky, high above the tower, was a reaper astride a divine horse and backdropped by the moon. A massive spear the size of a tower in its hand. The great witch sitting on the horse by the reaper spoke. Welcome back. This world does not belong to you. Do it, teacher. The heavenly spear pierced the ground. For an instant, it looked like some divine tower was sticking out of the ground. However, that was the very last thing those eyes ever saw. The sacred spear was the embodiment of heaven's wrath, and the strength to bury in an unclean city in a single stroke was unleashed upon the pack of goats. With a massive explosion that resembled a volcanic eruption, goats were sent flying all over the place. Not bad, I guess they really are witches. But is it enough? The enemies keep on coming. It looks like we'll be the ones swallowed up after all. At least you two seem to be enjoying yourselves. <laughs> How could one fail to enjoy such a festival? It seems our time in the limelight shall not be stolen from us after all. Looks like it. I'm all fired up. Yes. The cloud of goats truly was like a wave pressing in from the sea. You might be able to split a ripple on the beach with your feet. You can't split the sea. Which is good. However, that meant the other side also had some uh, someone who could split seas. Suddenly, smoke poured from one of the two towers, and the ground shook as it crumbled. What the hell happened? Over there, on top of the other tower. Erica, but of course, it's your turn now, is it not? At the top of the other battle tower, Erica stood gracefully, wielding her scythe. I'd say that's enough to show the witches of the Golden Land proper respect. All magic is fake. It's just a fantasy sandcastle that'll always vanish when mystery swallows it up. Playing witches was pretty fun though. I think I remember playing something like this with some older girls from the neighbourhood when I was younger. So let's bring this to an end. Now it's time to hear you scream. Erica threw that pretentious pirate hat she had been wearing this whole time into the sky. With the moon behind it, Erica's form, her after image, vanished from the tower's peak. Where is she? We have her on radar. She's on the side of the tower. Shaken with a wild, joyous laughter, Erica dashed straight down the tower. She swung her scythe like a baton, and as she passed along the tower's wall, its gun ports, walls, pillars, and everything else was crushed, leaving a trail of smoke. So from the sidelines, it looked as though a line of smoke suddenly split the tower from top to bottom. The golden arrows of the Chester sisters' corpse chased after Erica like golden threads in a sewing machine. You monster! Get yourself sewed and embroidered, yeah? <laughs> good. Good, good, good. <laughs> Even the Golden Arrows couldn't catch up with Erica. Finally, Erica reached the bottom of the battle tower and empty cartridges were ejected from the Golden Bows. Burst, useless tower. Isn't that the phrase? Erica, who had now landed on the ground, slowly stood up and tapped the tower behind her with the handle of her scythe. How dramatic. That tiny tap cut the final string that held the tower together and the whole thing fell in on itself with an earth shattering crash. Once again the dark tsunami rumbled forward through the rubble and smoke. I am Frodo Erica, Witch of Truth. This moment marks the dismantling of the Golden Land by the truth. Dust to dust, illusions to illusions. I'll end your daydream for you. Come, try and remember ghosts. Remember how you died so long ago. The goat tsunami swallowed everything up. When she saw them sink under the black sea of goats, Erica guffawed from atop the debris of the tower. Come on now, kill them, massacre them all. Cut off all their heads and stick them on spears. Ghosts of 1986, the time has come for the whirlpool of truth to swallow you whole and erase you. So long. Ah, oh, <laughs> bloody hell, that was a long one. Oh my god, my voice have gone. 
<laughs> okay, so the, I guess this has been Greeny XI. I hope you've enjoyed. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in a bit when I guess we'll carry on watching the war. The War of the Golden Land. And, uh, yeah, definitely some more. Some more back at the, the City of Books. Jesus Christ. <laughs> you can tell it's coming towards the end, can't you? <laughs> so, thanks again for watching, folks. See you again in a bit. Thank you.